Good morning, everybody. It's Askler time again. I'm just assuming you're listening to this in the morning at <laughs> was, this point. I was so confused. I was like, it's not morning? No, Jesus. What year is it? No, I no. wake up, Adam. It's time for school. <laughs> yeah. So oh. you are listening to Askler or probably even watching it uh, possibly on YouTube. Uh, I'm Beach, and with me today is, I guess, on my uh, two. No, it's not going to work. My, uh, my I'm Alex. Left. There's Alex. Um, yes. <laughs> And I'm on Beej's some some orientation. Yeah, and I'm on Beej's left. Mm -hmm. uh, Beej's far left. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Adam. Hello. It's uh, it's a beautiful day in Victoria, and you can't tell because we're all still sitting inside. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm right next to a window, and I can tell you that it is. I can open up. Overcast. Yeah, it is overcast where I am too. Yeah. Same. What a we're coincidence, we're in the same... Be weird, where I'm living, too! <laughs> wow, that's amazing! Wow, you guys, we have the same weather! That What a relief, right? <laughs> yeah. When it comes right down to it, it's like, oh, it would be so... Well, I mean, sometimes it's different. Sometimes I'll drive downtown and it's raining, and then I'll go home and it's not. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> to get back on questions. track... Yeah. I want to thank everybody who has been subscribing to the YouTube memberships, because... Uh, you're the ones who are actually the ones who get to give us the questions in the first place. Yeah. Um, so this is every question we're going to be asking can be submitted by somebody uh, who um, who is subscribed to the YouTube memberships. We also have a Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. And you can also back us on Twitch. And I mean, you could do other things too. You can send us mail to our, to our uh, PO box, or you can, I don't know, give us money on PayPal or just go to the store and buy merchandise. We have all sorts of things that in and how you can support us. But this thing is drawn from the YouTubes and given back to the YouTube so you can enjoy them. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we got a chunk of questions. I guess we'll just start rather than ramble. Paul, what do you got for us? Ah, have you all been reading more during the lockdown? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite book? Thank you, Bert Hagman. I don't want to go first because uh, I don't I, have an answer. I'm going to oh. cheat. Yeah. Um, uh, Chainsaw Man. Oh, okay. It's really good. It's yeah? it's. Um, is that a is that a? It's a manja. A manja. Yeah. It's it a manja. A, I was trying to think of a funny way to say it, but manja is pretty. It's good. a manja biblioteca. <laughs> um, manja. It's a yeah, it's, it's a it's a manga. It's manja. actually the first like manga I've read that I <laughs> liked or even gave a shit about in ages. Go <laughs> away! Not now. Oh my god! <laughs> Should we just start over? No! no absolutely Fuck. not! It's the first manga I've given a shit about in ages. Do -do 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 -do. Like you should have leaned into it and meant like just sold the, yeah. sold the plot with this oh, inspirational man. music in the background. What that is was... it actually about? Yeah. Can you um, give us a capsule? Okay, let me try and summarize it quickly mm -hmm. um it's basically a an earth-like setting where there's um there's demons that are they're manifestations of humanity's fears of certain things so like there's um there's like a darkness demon and like a hell demon and like a like a knife demon or a something taxes demon shit like yeah shit like that where it's just like the more afraid of the concept people are the more powerful they are mm. so there's like this character later that's like the gun demon or the gun devil i guess it um is like super crazy insane powerful and they've actually like had to uh it, like prevent uh firearms from being manufactured to just like try and lower the, the power level of this oh, thing wow. it's, like, okay nuts and there's like a, a demon or devil fighting um uh sort of squadron that, that's um, where the Chainsaw Man comes in, I'm guessing? Kind of. The, yeah. Where it comes in is that, like, the main character, Denji, who's this, like, teenage idiot uh, who's been saddled with his dad's, like, debts, is trying to work them off. And, like, in the first few pages of, like, the, the first chapter, I think it's in the first few pages, he gets, like, killed by creditors. And his pet, named Pochi, which is this little dog with a chainsaw sticking out of its face um saves his life by becoming his heart 
and he becomes like the chainsaw man yeah. so he's able to like turn his transformation is his head turns into like a weird thing and a, a chainsaw sticking out of it and chainsaws stick out of his hands okay and then he cuts stuff sick um right. does the it, dog crawl into his chest cavity like, yeah it, like... it reassembles him and becomes his heart <laughs> huh. um but it, so I'm taking this at face value. I'm just like, yeah. Yes, so ah. it, it, it gets so much more interesting than that because it's like, <sighs> there's a lot going on. Like you would uh, more so than you would expect of just like a kind of typical scene and where it's just like, we'll fight a monster of the week. And then, you know, it's over. Yeah. Mm. Um, it's, it's got a kind of feel and sense of humor similar to uh, uh, Doro Hetero by Q Hayashida, which I also love. Mm -hmm. Um, where it's like really, really grim, dark, and violent, but also like kind of goofy. Right. Which is like perfect for me. And it's got just like really cool design and amazing uh, action sequences. And it's just like pretty interesting character work. So I love it. I think it's really good. Nice. Cool. Adam. Uh, I haven't been reading. I used to read a ton. I haven't really been reading at all in the last like year. Um, my favorite author came out with a book, uh, just recently. That's like, he writes, like, he's one of those authors that has like his own kind of like universe and everything that he writes builds off of it kind okay. of thing. Right. Like, so yeah. it's like, there's his name is Joe Abercrombie. I should say his name. And he is like very like dark kind of, um, everything kind of sucks writing and like the good guys lose a lot and everybody's kind of flawed and it's just, I don't know. Um, the book I read was, oh my goodness, I can't even remember the name of the book. One sec, I gotta look at it. Book, Bookman's book, 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 A Little Hatred, that's the one. So now like- Adam and this can is, have a little hatred as a, yeah. as, a, as a treat. And this is like, this is that same universe. Like he has like a bunch of trilogies and books before this. Right. And this is like the kids of the characters. Like now he's writing about like, the next generation, I guess, like in the storyline, right, kind of thing, and it's good. I enjoy it. I enjoy Abercrombie's writing style, and like, I guess it's not really my favorite book, but like his book, um, uh, "Best Served Cold," is easily one of my favorite books of all time. Nice. I've is that the that... one you gave away during the? Yeah, uh, yeah, that yeah. one. I will like Foxy spout Disney. that one to everybody because like there is like a trilogy that you have to read beforehand that mention some of the characters you don't really you can go into best serve cope blind but like i don't know it's just like the one of the best revenge stories with the best characters i don't know it's hard to explain like it's kind of like um oceans 11 but murder but murder yeah <laughs> yeah that's wow. essentially it yeah okay that's very evocative, actually. Yeah. <laughs> we made this a very elaborate plan yeah. just to kill this one so dude. Elaborate. All these dudes. And yeah. stab. Yeah. Um, my, it's, uh, now that I remember, because I'm like, I read a book. Like, I'm, because I haven't read books. I have I don't sit down to read books, generally, uh, because I never seem to find time to go to the library mm -hmm. or take things out or do whatever. So I'm, like, never reading books. And I keep promising myself... The culture series sounds amazing, so I'm gonna bother Cameron for one of those and read that at some point. And then you'll probably you'll probably other... be talking to me because I have all of Cameron's culture books. Cool, right? And it's and it's like, oh, but I should also read like N.K. Jemisin or something because there's a, like a lot of and there's a lot of like authors of color that I have never read at all, right? So, uh, but then it occurred to me, wait, wait, hang on, we we sat down and watched Tales of Earthsea, the the Ghibli movie. And I was like, yeah, was this Goro wasn't, this wasn't one, very right? good. That was Goro Miyazaki. It was, it was Hayao's son. And I was like, yep, yeah, not very good. Not very well realized. Not very interesting. Like, mm. there was, I just felt like you didn't give us enough to kind of hang things on. And I'm like, well, then, damn it, I am doing myself a disservice by not reading the Earthsea series. So I asked to borrow a copy of A Wizard of Earthsea. And I read it. And my only complaint is that because I had just watched... Tales of Earthsea. <laughs> I couldn't picture everyone in my head the way they're supposed to look. I only pictured them the way that they're they're because mm, yeah yeah because yeah. like Sparrowhawk's supposed to be like a younger man, but all I can picture is this older white dude with a with a brown beard and whatnot. I'm like shit, I oh, that's not how that's supposed to be. I know that. So, but, but 
the book was really good. And I'm like, some of the elements are, were, were, were um, evocative of stuff that I've seen in other stories, but I'm like, of course it is. This book is fairly old. It's probably inspired a lot of those, that those kind of stories. Mm -hmm. um, that's the most recent book I've read. It's not my favorite book, but I did enjoy it. And I don't even like all the other reading I've been doing is just manga. Like I've been, I think I'm up to like tracking 800 series of manga on my manga tracker thing. Most of which are yes. not getting new chapters. Like just most of them are just done, yeah. but it's just like, I just keep adding more and more titles to the list of things to read as they get translated. So, Jeez. so I'm doing a lot of reading, but it's mostly both, just trash. Do you both read the manga like on a digital form or do you like, yeah. It? Um, yeah. It's actually kind of interesting because uh, the Viz is doing this thing where you can view the three most recent chapters for free. Mm. And then to access the back catalog, uh, you have to subscribe. But I, I read it elsewhere. Yeah. Just because like, they haven't printed <laughs> it yet. Um, but I think this is going to be one that I, I pick up the Tanko Bonds for because um, mm. it slaps. That's cool. Uh, let's do the next question. Then. All right. Okay. Are you more of a cat person or more of a dog person? By cat to cool. Hmm. <laughs> I feel like this is a little this front way. Loaded. Yeah. <laughs> Alex uh, is probably more of a cat person. I can't imagine why that is. Yes. If you are listening to this podcast, he just all he just turned his camera to show the cat who's being very quiet, which is lovely. Which is unusual. Usually she's scrim and get up on my lap. Yeah. I love cats so much. There's like. There's certainly an imagined difference between like cat people and dog people, and there is something in that, I guess. But it's also just kind of like a false dichotomy and bullshit. Mm -hmm. There's good cats, there's good dogs, and there's good people and not good people. So, if you if you think of it as a terms of like a preference for what would you rather have in your house, cat, hundred percent. Yeah, and then I want, and, I want to die with I'm a like, cat on me. I think I would rather have a cat in my house as well, a hundred percent. Which one would you rather have eat your dead body? Cat. I guess it'll have to be a cat. It would take a long time though. It would probably just like have a snack, get bored, and fuck off. <laughs> That's fair. I don't have a preference either way. I like both. I think yeah. I'm okay with both. Like I haven't had a pet in my living space for like. Well, oh, since I was like, you know, 13 or something. So, right. and I'm 36 now. So it's been a while since I've had like an active pet. My last active pet, I, I used to have a pet mouse. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was all mine. Yeah, it was great. I, I like, it's been a succession in my family was like having a cat and then also you have a dog. And then the, uh, eventually we got, our one cat was poisoned by our next door neighbor because they're an asshole. We were very young and we were moving and, and it's kind of like, this is all upheaval. And and so then when we moved, we ended up getting uh, another cat and he was like alive for 18 years. And then I, when he passed away, then I ended up inheriting my grandmother's cat who was only like about a year or two old by this point because she couldn't look after it anymore. And he lived for like about 16 years. And it's like, I also have been used to living with dogs and I love playing with dogs too, but it's mm -hmm. like, if I'm going to think about which one I would rather have in my house, it's like, I think I'd rather have a cat because a dog needs a lot of work and I'm lazy. So yeah, the both, cat I mean, lifestyle appeals. Both yeah. need a lot of work, but I know that cats generally need less work, but that's not to say like you can just ignore a cat too, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, there's still a creature of need. <laughs> I heard but I just don't have to like, I don't want to have to put my cat on a leash and take it outside and, and let it <laughs> piss and shit and then pick it all up. It's like, no, I have a box yeah. for that. You can go do that yeah. there. Ideal world, unlimited budget. I would kill to have a St. Bernard. Oh God. That sounds, that sounds like an Adam dog. Yeah. I, just a big dumb idiot. Fluffy, 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 just fluffy. The big moron, you know, of a dog that just wants to tromp around, fucking thinks he's smaller than he really is. <laughs> You know, just banging into things. The dog that just like stands there and wags and like smashes shit with its tail. Yeah, just an idiot. Like just a <sighs> ideal world, unlimited budget. I would be like, oh, get me a Great Pyrenees. I don't like know what I'd that be is. like big white dog, big white seven footers. Like I'm just like, yeah, give me one of those. I don't care if they'll live for like twelve years. It's interesting. I'm My preference in cats, like I, I haven't really had much in the way of like choice because I've kind of um become co-owner whatever of most of the cats that i've encountered and i like them all um just like 
I think it, I'm much more into like personality than any sort of appearance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I generally find something that I like about uh, all of them. You know, there's an interesting turn of or like theory that I heard once that um, I don't know how true it is, but they, somebody said that like cats are a lesson in consent, and people who really don't like cats. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when they can't uh, control them. <laughs> Holy shit. <Wow>. Or, um... <laughs> hmm. <laughs> right. no, some people just might not like cats. So, just, uh, but yeah, still, you know, just a hypothesis. <laughs> interesting to think just about. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> oh, oh, man, that's Not funny. saying you're an abuser if you don't like no. cats, but... It's... <laughs> but anyway, she stand up. <laughs> <sighs> she heard us talking shit like we wouldn't hear. Did you manage to find the Great Pyrenees, Adam? Yeah, I did. They're hot as fuck. What the fuck? Why is this dog so good looking? Like, right? this is unfair. It's like, that dog's prettier than I am. This is <laughs> like, you know what I mean? You know when you look at an animal and you're like, what the fuck? It's like, like, like a particularly they good looking gorilla? And you're yeah. just like, oh, that gorilla's all man. Oh, yeah, man. and it's like, well, you know what, motherfucker? I got these. And then the gorilla <laughs> sheds a single tear and fucking <laughs> doesn't matter how hot I am. <laughs> man. <laughs> I miss Harambe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, I'll get I'll, I'll get I'll, I'll get it out for Harambe then. Yeah. <laughs> Just right now. Hey, next question. Okay. <laughs> what is one movie (parentheses preferably one that isn't too hard to find in Canada on the usual streaming services) and (parentheses) one movie that you would recommend that everyone watch? Lee Peltz. Thank you, Lee. I have one answer for this question always. <laughs> Willow. Is Watch Willow. Willow, yes. Willow is, is the best. available on Disney Plus in Canada. Yeah. Willow is the best movie of all time, and I will die on this hill. I just watched it for the first time about a month ago. Oh, fuck, I love that movie. Everybody, there's a peck with an acorn pointed at me. Oh, man, I'll win this war for you, Eric. Man, oh, God, just gives me chills. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. I had played the arcade game, yeah, and that was my introduction to what Willow was about. Yeah. So being able to watch the movie and be like, "Oh, that's kind of I see why that's in that, not why they do that, and why there's a there's a cart racing scene here, and yeah. like all that kind of it was it was good, yeah, it, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was entertaining. He's like, "You are a great swordsman." He's like, he flips the sword around. Man, that movie's good. Gives me chills just thinking about it. The only thing that sucks is like the shitty love story between Sorsha and Mad Mardigan. Yeah. Because like it's very weird because Sorsha's like, I hate you. My mother's the evil queen. And then all of a sudden she's just like, I love you. I am attracted oh, to she's your, your, your magnetism. Like, you know what I mean? Like you're yeah. very the very presence of you has swayed my allegiances. Like, ugh. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I was kind of like not because he like oh I've I fall I've I have a weird spell on me and I've walked into your into your tent and now I'm falling in love with you and she's like what what oh my god I guess I'm in love with you too and I'm like yeah, really what that's, that fast yeah that's the part that sucks about that movie but it's a very 1980s movie but again I hate being like oh it was a product of the time it's like it's still <laughs> shitty you know what I mean it's still yeah. it's still shitty and dumb yeah no, <laughs> you, you can say it was a product of the time that was shitty yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true so uh. Yeah. Alien, 1979. The more I watch that movie, the more I look into it, the more I like it. It's yeah. it's a very specific kind of taste, though. Like, if you don't like horror and you don't like sci-fi, um, you probably won't like it. But I just think it's an amazingly well-put-together movie. Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, kind of the, the result of the ill-fated um, uh, Yadorowski's Dune project. Yeah. And it really shows... Um, okay, I've never been a big Dune person, but mm -hmm. I will say that the trailer was fucking fire. The new one, yeah. I from a from my standpoint, a very casual fan, I'm like, I want to watch that movie. Don't that you want to watch the Monster Hunter movie? No, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, now that we're going to talk about that, oh boy, I have never seen a movie so colossally miss what a, a franchise is about. You know what I mean? Not like, the Resident Evil series? Even that, I think Resident Evil's closer than what they're doing with Monster Hunter, right? They're like, you know what Monster Hunter needs? Rocket launchers and Jeeps and not a single cat cooking delicious food. <laughs> I I am only tangentially aware of Monster Hunter, and I yeah. watched the trailer and I was like, what is this dog shit? <laughs> like, how, how did they... How? 
Because like all they needed to do, all they needed to do was take like a Monster Hunter movie and do that scene. You know that scene in Hellboy 2 where they go to the weird underground marketplace and everyone's walking around and everything's like practical effects and yeah. stuff? They it's just need weird. to do that with Monster Hunter, but in a village, and it's just a bunch of fucking cats cooking food, <laughs> and that's it. That's all they had to do. And then okay. they could have been like, oh no, look, Arapalos. And then the cats start fighting, and then the monster start fighting, and then fucking roll credits. Fucking, I don't we're all done. <laughs> <laughs> that's, all, that's all you had to do. But instead, they're just like, yeah, these U.S. Marines get yeah, transported to another planet. Good thing they've got rocket launchers. It's like, fuck. Are so, we sure that there's not, like, a contract in the U.S. military that means they have to be in one movie per year? You, you know what? I'm, I wouldn't be like, you know, that makes sense. Yeah, that's, not, like, that's not so far from, no, From you being know, on Twitch and advertising your, your military. Now recruiting on Twitch. <laughs> yeah. The U.S. Army. They did that earlier this year. Are you yeah. shitting me? No, I'm not. Yeah. The yeah. U.S. military got basically booed off Twitch because they were like, hey, gamers, what's up? We're going to start an esports team. Fucking... Semper Fi, motherfucker, and then they're <laughs> yeah. like, let's play some League of Legends. I do kind of like that they were booed off of Twitch, because, yeah. like, the fear is always just like, oh, you're playing them murder simulators, they're getting you ready to be a soldier, and it's like, mm -hmm. hey, can we recruit you? It's like, get lost! We, the, we, we hate did a you. lot of stories on Checkpoint about it, because it was just like, the the faux pas is what we did the, the stories on, mm -hmm. uh, about the military being on Twitch. Um and they are they were really just kind of like holy shit we can't believe you're 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 doing i can't believe you've done this it was kind of, they're kind of astounding um and you can look up more information on those or go find the old episodes of checkpoint or each favorite more. movie but we've gotten way too yeah. we've gotten off i knew this was gonna happen i knew this was gonna happen i need to ask though together. while you were in the middle of explaining monster yeah. hunter yeah uh i lost I lost all audio. I couldn't hear you at all. So you're waving your hands and speaking, but I couldn't hear a thing. And I thought Paul had just muted you just for fun. <laughs> that would have been pretty good. Oh, could you hear... guys hear each other? Yeah. Yeah, I could hear Great. You. Okay. Yeah. So my... I could hear you laugh and stuff. So... Probably just my problem then. Okay. That's fine. That's hilarious. Um, my favorite movie. Okay. So my favorite movie I could sit down and watch like any time is Sneakers. Really? Right. Yeah. Yes. Why I don't... Is I've never seen it. Oh. So pitch me sneakers. So do you do you like? I know what the cover looks like. Do you do like caper movies? The blinds? Do you, do do you I like, like ca yeah. capers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is this is a caper movie starring uh, Robert Redford yeah, and Sidney Poitier and oh, Dan man, Aykroyd oh, and man. River Phoenix and uh, Ben Kingsley and like everyone is in this goddamn movie, right? Yeah. Just everyone is in this movie. Um, and what it's about is it's about a guy who was a hacker in like the 1970s, like the way you would be a hacker where, where it's like, you're, you're like with your hanging out with your buddy, you're on an old 1970s terminal hacking into a bank mm -hmm. and they're like stealing money from like uh, political parties and stuff and transferring them around to like, like causes like Greenpeace and stuff like that. Cause they're like, ah, you're, you guys are assholes. We're going to transfer your money over to this other you know organization. Yeah. That's like good for the world. Right. Oh the, God, here we go. The cops come and managed to only arrest one of the guys and the other guy goes into hiding. Mm -hmm. And then he ends up setting up a, a, um, a sneaking service is what they call it, but it's basically penetration testing uh, where they break into buildings to test whether or not you can break into a building. And oh. as a result of this, yeah. they get caught up in a very high stakes search for a cryptographic device that could crack any code on the planet in very short time. It's basically this this dude like the figures super hacker. Yeah, like yeah. A, yeah. And yeah. what's great about it is that everything they do is like it's way more plausible than any other kind of hacking you'd ever see it, uh, in a movie. You know, set. Like popular nineteen nineties film hackers. Yeah, exactly. Like the the <laughs> like when you like people went on about oh man in in the Matrix you can see Trinity log into a terminal and run Nmap and everyone lost their minds because they're like that's an actual tool you can use. It's a network mapping tool you can use to do hacking with. And uh, but it's not a hacking tool. It's just a tool that hackers use. And this is the same kind of thing. It's like everybody like everything about sneakers is like I can believe that a lot of this stuff really exists. The, and they end up having to put on their own sneak. To try to, um, to try to try to steal something, and it's uh, it's an astounding movie because like, it's really well paced. It uh, it took them ten years to write it, and it took them about that long to also 
find people to be in it. But once people started coming in and wanting to be a part of it, it was like, well, we're now we're going and we got to make sure this makes sense. It's just a really fun movie. <laughs> and I have no idea if you can stream it. I like the idea hmm. of like, you said that people heard about it and wanted to be part of it. Like I'm just picturing people in a lunchroom talking about their movie sneakers. And then Ben, ben, ben Kingsley walks by. He's like, Hey, <laughs> That sounds like fun. What are you guys doing? <laughs> oh, this can, is a great uh, movie. Sneakers can, and then he's like, yeah. He's, he's, got, ben, he's got like his like tray with like a sandwich and a banana. And he's like, can, can I can I sit down, guys? <laughs> yes, Ben. Yes, Ben Kingsley. You may sit down at our table. <laughs> you have to say his whole name. Yeah. It's like yes, Ben Kingsley. Sir Ben Kingsley. Like, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, but if you were looking for a movie that's very easy to find, one I just watched the other day uh, that. Go ahead and watch this because I enjoyed it and I was surprised I enjoyed it. Would be the martial arts documentary Kung Fu Panda. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got me. Fuck. Yeah. It was, it was good. I didn't expect it. I thought it was going to be trash. And yeah. we watched it and I'm like, this is so good. Yeah. Holy crap. I've heard like, it's really? good. I haven't watched it. Yeah, it really is. And I was like, I didn't think it's just, it's dumb and it's fun. It's entertaining. Hmm. It's Jack Black. And I'm just like, yeah, it ah. makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's fine. It's okay. Harder movie to find that I don't think anybody will find, but was a favorite of mine as a kid. Rockadoodle, hell yeah, Holy brother! Crap. You ever watch Rockadoodle? No, loved Rockadoodle. It was a Don Bluth film. Oh, okay, so you yeah. can already picture the art oh. style. It's not going to yeah. be in Disney Plus. No, sure <laughs> isn't. Yeah. Man, I love Rockadoodle. Watch the crap out of that movie. Disney Plus now streaming Heavy Metal. <laughs> oh no! Oh, Jesus! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Rock and Rule. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, I man. can also think of obscure animated hits as well. Let's do that. Yeah. Uh, obscure Canadian animated hits. Uh, next question, I guess. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Adam, did, did, did Beach me convince you to give more anime a try after spending days on the road with him? Question mark. If so, we'll find out. What anime have you been watching? If not, Beach, what anime would you suggest Adam watch? This is from mm -hmm. Samurai Tiger 19. So the question's for Adam, but I think Alex and can I can both make recommendations this, yeah. if you want. Yeah. Um, I haven't been watching a lot. I watched, okay, so after Road Quest, I watched, I watched Made in Abyss before Road Quest, I'm pretty sure, right? I think, I, I think, think so. Yeah, have? yeah, yeah, I might have. I think I did. But anyway, I watched Made in Abyss, loved it. Um, I watched Promise Neverland, loved it. Uh, that was after Road Quest, that's a post Road Quest world. Um, what else did I watch? I watched part one and two of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I haven't watched JoJo's in a long time, though. Um, JoJo's I I, a lot. JoJo's I particularly liked because it was just dumb. I like, <laughs> like, I like either like. There's no in between with me. It's either like I like my stuff like super gritty and very sad, and like everybody dies, or I like it real goofy. But like JoJo still has stakes, though. Like I like it when a get when a show has stakes, right? Yeah. I don't want to watch like the thing that I most commonly associate with anime is like hero triumphs overall right like it's like good guys always win so yeah. i like it when they they do things that are just like wow that's messed up like i watched um i haven't finished it i think i only have like two episodes left but i watched parasite loved it yeah that parasite was awesome um and then i watched a kami got killed which surprised oh, yeah. me. I liked it way more than I thought it would because like when I watched like the first, well, actually the first episode really sold me because I wasn't sure about it going in, but like there's like a scene where like, there's like a, it's a very like the rich get richer movie. Like the rich class are all scumbags and then everybody else underneath gets pooped on. It's all downhill, right? So it's a documentary. Yeah, it's a documentary. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that one was really good. I enjoyed that one a lot, but it was like, it, it definitely didn't look like it was going to be like that, you know, like a very okay. like maiden, I guess Maiden the Abyss is the same way. It's like a little girl and a cute little robot going on an adventure together, but everything's horrible. And like, it's all, I love it, man. Like I just watched the Maiden Abyss movie and that movie was unreal. I don't want to spoil anything, but if you like Made in Abyss, watch the movie. Find a way to watch that movie. It was so good. Uh, so then, what would I recommend Adam watch? Mm -hmm. I think Adam should watch the original Berserk anime. I tried. Okay, that was on Crunchyroll, but it's like the remastered version. Yeah, don't I watch the find, remaster. Yeah. That no. remaster was like hard to... I couldn't yeah. watch it. I was it's... like, this seems very much like my jam, though. I was like, oh, I like the world. You would liked... probably enjoy reading the comic. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of why I recommend the anime because I was like, if you watch it, you know, the first episode is basically, uh, the first episode is basically, here's what's happening now, and then mm -hmm. every episode after that is like, here's how we got to this point. 
Oh, and, I like stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I like stories that are told in that way. It's like, and then after that, because after that first episode, where it's like, here's where we got to, like, here's what's going on now. There is just years of manga past that. That's just even more crazy shit. That's terrible. It's happening. But what mm -hmm. I I never realized. Uh, I was like, what would be something you would like that gives you that kind of like, oh, fuck, kind of feeling? Mm -hmm. uh, Kaiji. Kaiji? I don't think you've ever heard of that. Mm -mm. So Kaiji is a story about this this dude who has some gambling debts. And uh, he keeps getting into situations where people are like, well, you're going to have to pay us back these gambling debts. Or, or not maybe not gambling debts, but basically like, you're going to have to pay back these money debts you took out a loan for 30,000 yen or 300,000 yen or whatever it was you're gonna have to pay that back and mm -hmm. you could either work at this convenience store for the rest of your life and never be able to pay it back which yeah. we don't like and we're gonna take all your shit or we have we have a plan for you uh come take part in this gambling operation where you could die <laughs> basically put your life on the line to be a part of this to to gamble and if you can actually like win you could win all the money you need to make your way out of this situation Unless, or yeah. you could lose and you'll either die or you'll be somebody's slave for the rest of your life or like all these kind of things and the tension is just sick it is just mm -hmm. it is the grind you into dust kind of tension i watched yeah. it I'm like this is so oh and i'm like <laughs> i could never watch any more of it but it was really it was quite fascinating that's what i heard about that new um same kind of thing with that new Adam Sandler movie. Have I oh, yeah. watched, not to go too off topic, but the tension. Like I heard, what's it called? The Uncut Gems or whatever? That's the one. The new Adam Sandler movie apparently is that intense like all the time. It's like wow. very uncomfortable. Everyone's like, oh, I don't like it. <laughs> you know? I like that in a, in a show, you know? Yeah, you might like Kaiji. Everyone ha also has very pointy noses. <laughs> oh, okay. What? Yeah. And I don't think like, I think I've always wanted to watch anime i think like that's just the in the the personality that i have and the the media that i consume i think it was just like i don't want to say inevitable that i would start watching it but i just didn't have like i didn't know anybody right? okay adam do you prefer um tv series or ovas or like movies uh i prefer the tv series like tv series okay like episodic i guess like i mean movies are fine but I find that I get distracted really easily. Mm. So sometimes I can like watch like one or two episodes and be fine. But if a movie, if I put a movie on, generally I have to start and stop it like, <laughs> like 30 times, you mm. know? <laughs> oh, um, you said you like stuff that's really stupid. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> you might want to give uh, Baki a try. Oh, Grappler Baki. It's so dumb. Grappler Baki? Well, yeah. okay. So like I watched, um there's a there's a new one uh it's just called baki it's on uh netflix mm -hmm. it's i don't normally go for that stuff that people say you know switch your brain off for yeah and i suppose i don't i don't but it was very entertaining because you're just like what insane garbage could they possibly do next to top themselves this time. So it's like a JoJo's kind of thing, right? Like, uh, if JoJo's was like really, really violent and like mean spirited, oh, okay. <laughs> almost. Yeah, it's, that's... Like, it's basically like a like a fighting tournament. The this arc that they um, cover in the Netflix series, mm -hmm. four like convicted felons in various parts of the earth suddenly decide they want to go to Tokyo <laughs> to 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 no defeat. At the okay. hands of the strongest oh, guy. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. As you do. That's you it. Know. That's their motivation. So they like sort of murder their way to Tokyo, and they encounter all these characters from the earlier series of uh, Dude, Baki, who are all like this. super gnarly hardcore dudes. There was like the first result was just a YouTube video that says the insanity of Grappler Baki. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh. That sounds cool. It's pretty funny. All right. You, you might also like Golden Kamui. Golden Kamui? Yeah. It's a story about a guy who was... This takes place right after the Russo-Japanese War. It uh -huh. takes place in Hokkaido. Um, and it's about a guy who finds out... A, he's he's called Sugi, Sugi Muda, Sugiyama the in, the Invincible or something like that. He never... The people He's been shot at multiple times, but he's never died. He's just incredibly lucky. Okay. And he he's... It's after the war he's back in Hokkaido and he finds out that there's like this giant shipment of gold 
that somebody in the Japanese army was supposed to like, that was like funds for the war that got sidelined and it's now hidden somewhere. Um, and people in Japanese army are trying to get it back. Mm -hmm. And the map to find it has been tattooed into the skin of, I think like 11 different, um, 11 different felons. Oh, I like that. And they've been trying to find all of these guys. Oh, and yeah. there was a jailbreak and a, and a lot of them got loose and they've kind of yeah. gone everywhere. And so now he's like... Like the wait. Dragon Balls. Yeah, essentially. And so, they, <laughs> so now like... he's trying to explore uh, Hokkaido in the middle of winter to uh, by himself to see if he can find any of these guys. And yeah. he meets up with this girl named Asirpa and she's Ainu. She's, she's indigenous. Okay. Oh. And she helps him learn about how to survive in Hokkaido and also how to fight bears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a hell of a series, and it it's it's funny at times. It's a good adventure at times. It's also kind of brutal at times, pretty so, brutal. Like this one time in the manga, they come across like a hotel that is just a place where uh, the person who runs the hotel has been just murdering everybody who stays there, mm. and they have to try to escape. Okay, it's interesting though. So like, I, I like real it. self contained stories too, like. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot Kinda. of animes that do that. Like, they have a greater... I find that... I guess this is most TV shows, but, like, you know, they'll have, like, a big arcing storyline, and they have, like, weird, like, one-off episodes, like, that don't yeah. like, really fit in. Like, not fit in, but just, like, they needed them something to do for an episode just to yeah. mess around. Yeah. Take a breath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Take a breath, no. get murdered by somebody. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. I just dredged something up from my memory banks. Yep. Uh, have either of you seen Gankutsuo? Nope. Oh, Jesus. The Count of Monte Cristo. It's the sci-fi anime hyper stylized Count of Monte Cristo. Ooh. So if you like that original story, this is their take mm -hmm. on it, and it's dazzling. The only reason I didn't get to finish watching the series, it was very good, was because uh, our friends at the time who we were watching with couldn't tolerate it emotionally to finish the series. Damn. <laughs> they are just like, <laughs> Just couldn't handle it yeah no it, it, it's it's exquisite and yeah. i strongly recommend it i don't know why anime gets such a bad rap you know because a lot of it's oh trash. don't get us started okay yeah, yeah that's, I, know not, a lot of it's, I know a lot of it's bad like you yeah. know what i mean but well, it's like like like, like a lot of it yeah, yeah but true. it's like it's like a lot of american tv right and the problem yeah. is that is is that what gets brought over to the West is like, oh, look at all this, look at all this otaku bait, look at all these, yeah, like, we're the gonna need enemies. another podcast if we go down this road, so exactly. we should probably move on to the next yeah, question. Anyway. Let's do that. <laughs> next question is thinking back to before the pandemic, as I'm only wearing pajamas now, how important is your outfit to you, and how long do you spend on putting one together in any given day? Day 04, who would like to go first? I don't put any thought into what I wear, yeah, me neither, me neither. Good question. Wow. <laughs> good answers. Good answer. Good now, answer. Actually, well, because it's before the pandemic, and yeah, and actually, I did because I uh, a friend of mine taught me a system where it's like uh, when you get home, if your shirt isn't dirty, like if it doesn't need to be washed that day, and you can tell, right? Mm -hmm. Then you take it off, you put it on a hanger, and you move it to one side of your closet, and you always pick that side of the closet to hang your shirts up on, and then when you come back the next day with a new shirt you hang it up on that side, like to the right of your shirt, for example, right? Mm -hmm. So every time I hang up a shirt, I'm always hanging it to the right of my shirts, and then my shirts get slowly moved along in my closet to the left. And so I always grab shirts from the left side of my closet to wear. And it's not like I have a rotation, but it means like, am I in the mood to wear my purple shirt today? Uh, no, I'm gonna be on I'm gonna be on camera and I wanna pop out a little bit more, so I wanna wear this orange shirt oh, today I or I wanna wear this other that one. far ahead. Oh yeah. man, you're thinking- Clothing yeah. is very utilitarian for me. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's unfortunate because like I could probably enjoy it if I put my mind to it, but it's just like there's some underpinning confidence issues. And I also in times previous when I tried to do anything with my outfit, I would mm -hmm. get like a weird response from uh fans that just like made me kind of uncomfortable. Like, do you have a job interview today? And it's like Christ. I just wanted to wear something different. <laughs> yeah, and it I was just like, fuck this. I guess I'll just you know, dress the way that you expect me to, so you won't say anything. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I've had a lot of time to grow. And I mean, unfortunately, I'm not sort of in a situation, nobody's in a situation right now where they can, you know, do that. But maybe when I come out the other side of this, we can take another shot at that. I think yeah. I would like to, I the, the the sort of half joke I used to say was that I want to dress like Kraftwerk. Uh -huh. You know, just like solid colors, like reds, blacks, maybe yellows. Really strong. Yeah, just really striking. Maybe yeah. actually, 
I might be able to get away with uh, pulling that off, that off now that Helltaker is so popular. It, it, Am I crazy? It, no? no, I don't think so. I when I having um, Heather helped me learn how clothing should fit because I just would always like my my mother likes to buy clothing and so she will she will buy stuff that she's pretty sure fits me and then she sends it to me and it's like I guess I have new shirts now right mm -hmm. and I never have to think about going to buy my own stuff but um starting when I'm dating Heather and, and obviously being married that it's like it got to that kind of impressed upon me the importance of when you get a shirt you should make sure that the yoke on the shirt actually finishes where your your shoulder actually is the the, the joint in your shoulder is this the one's a little a bit yoke? Long. The, the yoke, the shoulder yoke, right? Get yoked, brother. <laughs> you got any of them eggs, brother? <laughs> and that, like, that helps the, the drape of the shirt actually look like it fits you properly. Or if you need to buy something that's slightly fitted, then you should be looking huh. for stuff from certain brands. And, like, da -da 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 -da. it's like buying when you buy a shoe, right? It's like some shoes actually fit wide somehow, some fit mm. narrow. And that thing of inculcating those little bits of knowledge over and over and realizing it's like, oh, I just have to, if I find a shirt that fits me nice, I actually like wearing it better. So I should be doing that more often is trying to find something that, that actually feels good when it's on me. And then I'll know that I look good when I'm wearing it. Mm -hmm. And that was like, it's slow little bits of that. It's like learning how to like, maybe I shouldn't drink two liters of pop every day and I'll just put that <laughs> aside. And, and then slowly over time, you start building up new habits of how to do things. That's kind of how that happened with clothing. And I'm not completely there yet, but uh, next question. Yeah. Let's do that. We got time, I think for one more. All right. Let's rock. What's your favorite band slash musician that you believe no one knows about from Daniel Hear Us? That no one knows about? No oh. one knows about. Okay. Because, like, um, I mean, everybody's seen my Birthday Massacre t-shirt, but they're not, like, that obscure. I don't, mm. yeah, I didn't know who they were. I didn't know what the whole shirt was about. No, they're good. Um, I might need to think uh, to think about this. Well, I mean, like, most of the bands that I like are just, like, other bands from the 90s, like, skate punk bands from the 90s that people have heard of, right? Mm -hmm. There's, like... Oh, I know. Check um, a few, like a few amount of people have heard about. It, I guess, like some, I guess, like just some of my favorite bands. Like I like Thrice. I like a band called the Cancer Bats, and uh, I like a band. There's a Canadian band called Monine who are one of my favorites. Who are known for like having really long song titles. That's like their thing. Yeah. So like song titles would be like, you know, long. a sentence. <laughs> yeah, like a full sentence. Like, like a light novel title. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a short, like a short story title. You know, <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, those are some of my favorites. I haven't, like, really listened to music in, like, years, you know? Like, kept up on it and stuff. Because I used to be, like, super into it. I mm -hmm. used to do uh, freelance interviews for a website called punknews.org. Nice. Which I, that's come up every now and again. I guess I've talked about it, like, when I've been streaming and stuff. But I don't know. I just always used to love music. So I did, like, an interview of uh, a musician named Frank Turner. Was one of the ones that I did. And he is very popular, but he's more of like a folk singer, I guess. Okay. Uh, I very much enjoy his music and like the way he, and his style and the way he carries himself too. He was very nice, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's pretty, I don't, I'm just trying to think of like, do I know any musicians that nobody knows of? And I don't think I so. got, I got one for you. Yeah. Right. Uh, Austrian techno pop band, Mind in a Box. Mm -hmm. Never heard from of them. From 2002. Yeah. No. Um, they have a pretty cool kind of like, I mean, they describe themselves as a cross between future pop and progressive trance. Um, and they have really shitty lyrics. <laughs> but I, I love them. <sighs> shitty as in like, yee. they No, they, they... Or shitty as in like... They don't like, even. they don't rhyme. Okay. And it, it's weird. They also have this thing where they, they have like this narrative going through a bunch of their albums. Mm -hmm. which is kind of amusing but also like really corny ah. um but that all having been said uh i really like their sound um okay. i used to listen to it a lot on streams i had uh so i have two um there's a there's a band called exploding plastics um that they uh it starts with an x and it ends with an x that's how you would spell it okay and they do, I think they're Scandinavian. Um, they do this kind of weird, um, um, I can't even describe like the, the style of music because it's not because it's like, oh, it's, you know, it's too weird or it's esoteric or whatever. It's just like, because I don't know what the style is. I just heard them do a song called Treat Me Mean, I Need the Reputation, 
on a compilation video of something awful memes. Oh, ah! man. What? That's a deep hole, V. Yeah. That's like seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. That's... Yeah, and it's it wasn't even like it wasn't even the main song. It was the because the, the main song is Super Bon Bon by Soul Coughing. Super which bon I think people, bon, Super Bon Bon. People know that one, right? Super but bon the bon. the end the credits theme was Treat Me Mean I Need the Reputation. I was just kind of immediately struck by how cool this one song was. I feel like I know Super Bon Bon from YTMND. That probably would have gotten around that way uh and, and but yeah but exploding plastics did this one song and so i went and i listened to it, like i found the whole track i'm like this is pretty cool and it's kind of it's rock but a little like heavy influence with a bit of jazz but also like it's it's frenetic a lot mm -hmm. of the time and it's it's like a little like electronica and whatnot and i was like this is just really wild and so i really enjoyed listening to that they have several albums so of course it's like than wh whatever era it was, I went and I downloaded all the albums. I didn't actually pay for them, but now I'm starting to like, buy the catalog. Uh, but the other uh, one I would bring up, which is a complete sea change of that, is Khaki King, K-A-K-I, Khaki King. And she is a solo artist, primarily, um, and she is a guitarist. And in, in her 20s, her whole thing was um, um, a lot of, like, melodic... Uh, she basically play unaccompanied and she'd do a lot of melodic and harmonic stuff by herself on her guitar and she'd do a lot of tapping and a lot of those kind of things. Amazing, uh, um, amazing uh, ability. Mm -hmm. And I got to see her in, um, I got to see her in Sydney, BC, uh, like I think a year or two ago. And uh, she just, she had to bring her new album out. She basically came out, her guitar was mounted on a stand in front of her. She basically walked out to the guitar, situated herself around the guitar and then played like all the stuff of her new album while well, they had a projector, it was a bright white guitar. They had a projector playing videos on her guitar and playing other videos behind her that had to do with what she was playing on the guitar. She looked like a goddamn superhero. It was amazing. <laughs> and then after that the, sounds sick. it was so uh, it was just rad as hell. And so <laughs> after the show, when she was like signing autographs and stuff, I waited till the end and I walked up and like, could I get you to sign my guitar? And I, She's like, yeah. So I ran up to my car, grabbed my guitar, and came back. Because I play an ovation because she plays an ovation. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And so I asked her to sign it, and she was like, oh, this is really, this is a beautiful guitar. And she signs it and whatever. And and her dad was there, too, because he tours with her. And, and he's like, you know, don't sell that on eBay. I'm like, I wouldn't sell this if I needed to live. Like, <laughs> this is my treasure. Are you kidding me? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, if I needed food, I'd find another way to get money first. So, yeah. So, but she's just like this tapping and a lot of like electric mix in stuff. She has like pedals and stuff. She loops a lot of things and it's um, it, just an amazing artist and a very, very skilled. Hmm. And she also, she works with the Mountain Goats and she also, I think, helped to, she helped to like write movie scores. I think she wrote the movie score for Into the Wild. Hmm. Oh, what was her name? Khaki King. Khaki King? Yeah. That's cool. Damn. Uh, little beach with his guitar in his little trunk and like oh, yeah like oh, I'm yeah. freaking the hell out like here i am i'm like i'm like 10 years older than her and i'm just kind of like oh my god brush with greatness and it's like it, it's it's i understand when people have that happen when they come to see us and they're like oh my god you guys are so cool or whatever and i'm like yeah. i i get it because you yeah. you build up a picture in your mind right yeah. so you know everybody has that and everybody fan fanboys or fangirls for somebody so fan persons fan persons yes stands fan thems you got one more? We got one I, more do we have time for another one? I think we could... A shorty? As it long as it's fast. One wanted, yeah, this one. I like this question. With the state of the past months, state of things in the past months, what is a positive outcome you have seen or learned about your work slash craft slash life from Joey Brisson? I have learned that I work great in fits and starts mm -hmm. and that um, my body loves to fall asleep when it wants to fall asleep and wants to wake up when it wants to wake up. And mm. so having the kind of work and lifestyle I have now has been very conducive to just letting me be the way I want to be and letting yeah. me work in the way that I want to work, which is a way more fluid than the kind of standard. Not like a rigid schedule. Like yeah. Like don't a, get like to work at eight. Five. <laughs> yeah, like get here at eight, work till four, you get a lunch break at two 30. It's like, or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. This is, this has been like the pandemic has kind of let me feel very, there's a lot more flow to what it is that I do, but it also means that it might be 1130 at night and I'm doing work and I'm like, I don't mind that. My brain is in a, in a state where it wants to do that now. Hmm. So that's what I've noticed. Hmm. Um, once again, I find myself uh, being grateful that I have a comic project to 
work on Keep yourself through. busy yeah. yeah um i mean I'm, I'm in a i mean despite everything uh i'm still in a better space than i was a couple of years ago but uh mm -hmm. i have been um managing to to keep a pretty consistent schedule on my primary comic and i found some time to like go playing around with uh digital as well which is fun you know i play in both sandboxes but yeah nice uh well i mean bodying scrubs right yeah like i've learned a lot from because i switched like my whole streaming thing to just playing fighting games and I am not one of those people that enjoys heated competition. I don't like the way it makes me feel. I don't like the way that some people react in heated competition. I just don't like it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, it was a lag. I lost cause of the lag and it's like, yeah, oh, don't be like that. Or just like people being up. Yeah. Like I get wildly uncomfortable when I'm playing a game with somebody and they are getting frustrated. You know what I mean? I, yes. You're talking about something that like, if you wanted the fastest way to spoil any experience I'm having, like this happens with Matt, well, used to happen with magic. Yeah. Um, your opponent tilting is just like, yeah. I need to watch like, a grown ass adult you. acting <laughs> like a child. That yeah. sucks. Yeah. But it's just like, not even that, like, but it's definitely taught me how to lose, mm. especially in front of a group of people. That's the biggest thing that I've learned the last couple of months is like learning to lose, learning to lose with like some sort of self-respect, you know what I mean? <laughs> Not Dignity, yeah. at, looking inwards uh -huh. for every loss rather than like, just being like, what, oh, what could I have done better? Yeah. It's like, what did I do wrong there? Or what could I have done better? It's like losing and usefully. Yeah. It's like, it's definitely taught me that some things take a long time to learn and some things will take a long time to learn and you'll never be the best at it. And that's okay too. Right? Like I've learned a lot from playing street fighter and fighting games in general that I never would have learned any other way where I'm like, and I'm watching other, when I watch other people do it too, like, cause I've had a bunch of people start playing fighting games around the time that I started. Mm -hmm. And just hearing them say things out loud that I would think in my head. And I'm like, oh, I was there. You know what I mean? Like mm. just a couple months ago, I was, I was, I felt how you felt, you know? And it's like, I get it. And it doesn't help for me to say like, yeah, it gets better. You know what I mean? Like it's such a platitude. It's just yeah. like, yeah, it gets better. It's like, yeah, I understand that everything sucks and it's frustrating and you lose all the time. And that doesn't get any easier. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And you, everybody that I've talked to that have been playing fighting games for like for years are like, man, it doesn't get any easier. Even to this day, I still think I'm garbage. And you like, when I watch other people, I'm like, wow, you're really good at this. I'm like, yeah, I'm trash. It's just like, it's not a thing that's like, they're downplaying their accomplishments. It's just like, I don't know. Is it because it, it because you have to lose so many times you between have to lose victories? So many times. And when you see yourself lose that often, you're like, well, my, my win loss ratio is like thousands of losses to like a hundred wins. Yeah. But it's the wins that matter in the tournaments, right? Where everyone's yeah. like, you're amazing. And it's like, right, but you didn't see the thousands of losses I have. To... There's this interesting graph that I've seen that mm -hmm. charts um, the the sort of disconnect between um, uh, artistic skill and ability to analyze yeah. that explains a lot of uh, the frustration you encounter. Because like your, your skill and um, ability to perceive kind of develop um yeah, as your skill goes another. up it's like so you it's get like, to a certain point you know your skill gets pretty good <clears throat> and your ability to observe improves so much that you can see the flaws and you're like oh i suck and then you work on your skill and it catches up again it's it's mm -hmm. difficult to describe without having it here visually but huh. yeah, um, that's well but it's, it's like once you I once you achieve the once you achieve it. the the area of where you like i fixed all my flaws i can see how good i'm doing but then you can start to see how you're like wait, I can see even more flaws. You're like, well, it's harder and yeah. harder for me to get to that point. Yeah. Like there's always a, a place you can go to. Well, like, it's like, like with anything, like any like long, like what's the word I'm looking for? Any hobby or any skill that you have to put a lot of time into to see gains. Mm -hmm. um, this is kind of the first one that <clears throat> outside of like, I guess working out like gym work that I've really kind of dove full into that I'm like, oh, 
I need to work at this every day. And I definitely yeah. notice a difference if I haven't done it in a while, mm. you know, it's just like working out and like even looking at my played time on street fighter, I have 500 hours played and that compared wow. to a lot of other people is very small, but like I'll play people that have like 30 hours played and they're mm -hmm. like, wow, I suck. I'll never get good at this. And then like, I can't even beat you. It's like, yeah, but I have 500 hours played. You have 30. This is how I feel when I play somebody with 10,000 hours played. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, it's all relative and like mm -hmm. the amount, like, God, just like the, the whole, and like, I can see, I, now I'm at the point where it's like, I've stopped making like huge gains in my skill level. Right. And now from now on, I'm only going to see like very small gains, but each small gain is so much harder to get than those big gains were. Mm. Right. Cause like there's all these things to talk about, but like, it's just like, I don't know. It's just like something I've learned about myself. is just like, I need, I, I function a lot better as a person when I have like a thing to obsess over. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. my life is more rewarding when I have like a, I have a concrete thing that I can work at and like yeah. every day I can chip away at it a little bit. Get it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think that's just going to take us to the end of the podcast at this Damn. point. Uh, but yeah, thanks guys. And thank you to everybody who is listening to Ask Lear for this month. Uh, I'm Beej. I'm, I'm Alex. Adam. Oh, and yeah, I'm Adam. It. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> there. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. Uh, I want to remind everybody that you can find our Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. You can also back us on Twitch, twitch.tv uh, twitch slash loading ready run. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have our website and our store, store.loadingreadyrun.com. But all the questions today were sourced from our YouTube members. You can join the YouTube memberships by going to youtube.com slash loading ready run and not the subscribe is just a subscribe, but you can sign up and become a member of our channel and that'll allow you to submit your own questions so that when we do one of these again next month with whole new people, and you'll see the call go out for that when that happens, that maybe your question will get picked and we will talk about it. But until then, take care and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Heather.